Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with some more strategy games with AOE3DE, and today is my first tier maker list, so I'm not too sure if I'm going to do another one of these, but I've seen a few videos flying around on YouTube, and you know what, I thought to myself, I can do one of those, why not? And um, I'm in a pretty interesting and unique situation, because I didn't really play the original game um, competitively, I only really played it on campaign 1v1 when I was, when I was a lot younger, um, so when I bought the definitive edition, that's when I really wanted to start playing online and a bit competitively, a competitive um, playing as well. So I've nearly got 200 hours on the game. I've pretty much played across all civilizations. I've dabbled in all of them and sort of understood their their fundamentals and the foundation of each civ and why they're what their unique sort of traits are and, and stuff like that. So this is going to be sort of a tier list of the difficulty of each civ. So it's sort of like the barrier to entry, you could say. It's sort of like how difficult are they from a first impressions point of view. Um, I'm probably going to name the video something a lot easier than what I've just said there, but you know what I mean? Like how, how difficult are the civs to play when you're new to the game? And maybe if you're like an intermediate player or, you know, you haven't even, or maybe you just mained one civ and you, you don't, haven't really tried the other ones. This video is going to be good for you if you want to try out. This isn't going to be how good are the civs. This is just going to be how difficult they are to pick up. So we've got five categories here. We've got a breeze, easy, not too hard, tricky, and a tad daunting. So the breezes. Should we start with the easiest and work our way further into, into the depths of difficulty? So straight off the bat, the ones I think that are a breeze are the French, uh, the British. Uh, b -b 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 yeah, I would honestly just say <clears throat> the French and the British. This may change as we go throughout because I might move some around. But honestly, I think the French and the British are probably the easiest. And the reason I say that is because the only unique thing to the French is obviously they've got a few unique units, but their villagers are super tanky. So their villagers, they're called Courier de Bois, and they are got a high HP pool and they do more damage. And it's just very, very beginner friendly because, you know, you're probably going to get raided a lot when you're playing competitive you know, you are going to get sort of uh, potentially rushed and you could lose villagers. So having sort of villagers with a high HP pool, more resilient to those attacks, you won't lose as, as many villagers as you would playing other civs. And also those villagers will collect stuff a lot quicker as well. Um, and I think this is pretty much the go to. I think a lot of people, when people say I'm new to the game, can you recommend a civ? Pretty much 80% of the people will say French. So definitely the French. Now the British, I'm going to keep a breeze. Potentially could be easy uh, because you've got the whole manor situation, which are the houses. So houses, when you build a house, it, it spawns a villager. So every house you build, you get a villager. So that's the kind of unique thing. And you sort of have to build your shipments around that. So, you know, sort of um, focusing on wood shipments and stuff like that. If you want to do like a manor boom and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the French and the British at a breeze for now. Moving down into the easy, I'm gonna put Ottomans. Um, I'm gonna put down uh, Spain as well. And I'm gonna put down, it's tricky. I was thinking of putting Germans in, in easy to, to start off with. Um, but I don't know, you know, it's, it's tricky when you're reviewing it all. But I think I think potentially we'll leave it there for now. So we've got the Ottomans and, and the Spanish. So the Ottomans, obviously, your villagers will come out automatically uh, free of charge. So they're just like a timer. They just keep spawning. Um, this is really, really good for people um, who struggle with macro skills. So basically, when I say macro, I mean focusing, multitasking, making sure that you're... Um, keeping a track of your economy whilst pushing out with your military and being able to multitask that. And, and that's like one of the fundamentals to try and learn when you play any RTS, any like old school RTS game. So I think the Ottomans really help you out there. Um, the only reason that they're not in a breeze category is because of the fact that you've got that whole villager uh, limit and the recharge limit and you have to build a mosque to do that. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit different to your classic sort of build a villager from a town center. There's, there's a few unique things there 
that could sort of trip up uh, a new player. But they, I, I think they could sit in easy. Spain, once again, as I say, very similar to the French and British. Same again, you ju you're just getting your villagers at your, your town centre. Villagers cost food. Same with the other um, sieves there. Um, but the thing with the Spain is, is obviously you've got to bear in mind about your shipments. And there's a lot of timings involved with Spain. And it can be a little bit tricky to try and, you know, uh, use Spain to its best. But as I say, we were just looking at the difficulty of playing the Civ at a very, very basic level. And I think Spain being put into the easy, um, for now, we'll leave it there. So not too hard. This is There could be a lot in the not too hard. Uh, sort of the middle ground here. Um, so I'm going to probably go with Russia, Germany, uh, probably Sweden, uh Potentially the Dutch. No, Dutch could be quite tricky because of the way they work. Um, let's go with the Lo the Lakota would be not too hard, I don't think. And potentially the Portuguese um, to play. Uh, uh, let me just think about this. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. So this one's a tricky one because some are going to be in the not too hard section. Some are going to be popping up into easy and uh, some are going to be in tricky. So I've put it there as not too hard. So we've got the Russians. Now the Russians, you get stuff in batches. So you get your villagers in batches of three um, and they actually cost a lot less. And obviously they're a very, very rushy sort of sieve. So that's why I've left them there. There's not too, you know, there are obviously they've got their unique units. Uh, their block houses, for example, which are their barracks, they, they do damage. They actually have like a tower on them so they can actually shoot uh, enemy units. And also they can take shipments as well, which is interesting. Uh, Germany, you've got your settlers and you've got your, your wagons as well. I think they're called wagons. Um, that gather a lot quicker and build buildings a lot quicker and stuff like that. Uh, their their shipments are interesting because you get Ulans with pretty much every shipment from age two, which means you've got to make sure that you've got enough pop. So that's why they're not too hard. That's why they're not easy or a breeze basically. It's because you've got to bear that in mind. The Swedes I'm thinking of either putting into not too hard or tricky. And the reason that is, yes, once you've got a hang of Swedes, they're very, very easy to learn. But from a new player perspective and someone who's never played the Civ, trying to understand like building the Torps, for example, when to build Torps, which gather your resources or they, they gather food and gold for you and trying to factor in all that sort of stuff, I decided to leave it at not too hard. So it's going to stay there. Now, the Lakota... The reason they're not tricky or or tad daunting or basically the reason that they're in this category is because of the fact that you don't have to build houses so that's a big relief you don't have to worry about building houses and focus on your pop um, but from the other perspective it's trying to make sure that you you have to build buildings you have to build the um the tribal marketplace to be able to collect gold so you have to build a building to collect gold which is kind of unusual and also because it's natives, you have the community center, which is a very, very interesting mechanic. And that will be very um, foreign to new players. Uh, so that's why that one's staying there. Um, Portugal, once again, because you get you get a town center, uh, a, t a TC shipment, uh, or Trovoir, sorry, out of every uh, age up. That's quite unusual. So you've got to try and factor that in. Uh, Portuguese are very good on water as well, and that's a big learning curve. So I think putting them on not too hard is a fair one there. So we're going to move on to tricky. So tricky, I think definitely Japan could go into tricky. Uh, Inca could potentially go into not too hard instead of tricky, but for now it's going to stay there. Uh, once again, uh, the Dutch. See, the Dutch could move up into not too hard, but we're going to leave them there. Um, the Houdinasoni. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm just going to say Houdinasoni. Um, they're probably going to be tricky. Uh, and the Aztecs, I would say, are in tricky as well. So 
from my perspective, potentially all of these three could move into not too hard. But the only reason that I've got them in here is because Japan, for example, you have to build shrines to produce food, wood or gold and you can switch. Um, and that switching is is all dependent on the macro. It's all depending. It's all you trying to understand what resources I need in the near future. What do I need now? What do I need shortly? And that kind of mindset and keeping your eye on your resources and stuff, that does not come to someone who's who's trying to learn a civilization or who's very new to the game. So that's why I put Japan in as, as tricky. Although once you do get an understanding of them, then obviously, you know, it becomes a lot easier and they are a very, very powerful civ because if I was ranking Japan, they would probably be, you know, up in the top three civ wise from my perspective. But yeah tricky uh inca same sort of thing as well auto gathering buildings so sweden's got the auto gathering japan has inca has dutch have they've all got this whole auto gathering building that is quite unusual to people who you know have never played an rts and also who have only played old school like age of empires 2 age of mythology those games so that's one for that and also the fact that you've got a community center as well because they're um, a native uh, Civ is a is an unusual thing as well, and obviously they've got all different units. Their units are completely unique to other Civs, so it's a whole learning curve as well. So that's why they're in tricky Dutch. Sort of similar again. You've got to build banks to auto gather coin for you, um, and it's just trying to understand when to build banks and stuff like that. To be honest, maybe the Dutch could move into not too hard, potentially. Uh, but we'll we'll leave it in not too hard. Tricky, you've got the um, Hudanasone. Now, once again, they're also they were originally known as the Iroquois, and they're a native civ again. So once again, it's that same thing. It's the classic community center that trying to learn how to use that. Obviously, you're going to use community center a lot later on with this civ. Um, all different like unique units as well just a big learning curve uh, i think i think with this civ and trying to use them at, at their full potential is can be very very tricky <laughs> tricky exactly aztec once again community center but they use warrior priests for their community centers so you're going to want to build a community center very very early on um in like the first age with this civ and once again unique units trying to understand what they counter uh, what's their pros and cons um a lot to learn and yeah they're very low on the um civ list i would say how powerful they are as a civ they are quite low down but as i say will take a while to get used to so i'm going to leave them in tricky and you've got the last two which i think's definitely fair china and india now the main thing with china is the whole banner army concept is is very interesting uh the way that you train military units in, in groups of, and they're different types of units as well. Once again, they're all sort of unique units. Uh, not, no other Civ, I think, has the sort of units that China has. So it's another learning curve. Also, trying to use them to their full potential is very interesting. You have to obviously build your, your wonders or your... I think they're called wonders. But your, your sort of main buildings, you have, you have to build these wonders to obviously age up into... Um, each civ, uh, each age, I can't even talk. You have to build wonders to age up and you have to do that with both Japan and India as well. So that's another sort of learning curve. But yeah, a lot to sort of learn with China, trying to understand like the macro element, what resources you need for what, what you need to focus on, how your units work, uh, all this sort of stuff. It can be very, very daunting. Um, so yeah, definitely probably more than a tad daunting, probably very daunting. Same with India as well. So India, the, the, the whole issue with India is the fact that to get villagers out, it costs wood, not food. And the reason that's really, really tricky is because you, you're going to have to be balancing three different resources all the time. A lot of civilizations, when you get into age two, age three, you're predominantly focusing on two resources. Um, now, those are usually those resources are for your military units or you're going to transition into um, into getting food and gold to be able to age up but with india it's kind of crazy because you've always got to be focusing on those three resources because you, you need constant villager production which is going to be your wood and then 
usually it's your food and goal which are going to be for your military units with India which means that you're going to be having to focus on all three at the same time plus they've got all unique units just like China and yeah very very daunting I definitely would say that's in daunting 100% so there we go so I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of interesting video I haven't seen a video out out there about this so sort of the uh, sort of ranking the difficulty um, of civilizations uh, now I'm not too sure how I'm going to name the video but by the time you've seen this I've already named it so I hope you guys really enjoy this please let me know down in the comments below if you think I got any wrong if you think potentially it could move around a little bit more maybe some of these not too hards could move into tricky or maybe easy please please let me know I've only got around 200 hours on the game as as you know and I'm still learning how to play the game but I've pretty much dabbled in all of these sieves and this is my sort of impression of what I have as a beginner player to Age of Empires and I hope this is really really useful for people who are picking up the game who want to move to a different sieve um, I know someone who just plays Ottomans and if they want to move to a sieve they might want to look at it and be like okay what's what's easy okay right French Brits let's give them a go you know or maybe Russia Germany or if they think they're confident they can try out you know some of the tricky or the daunting sieves who the hell knows so I hope you find this really useful you guys know what to do to support the channel uh, you can catch me streaming on Twitch at Widgy1. Have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.